All right, so I've got these head components. Noticed I burned the uh, the kind of main behind. I can always question whether I, I like it more or less. I burned it so much that it took almost all the color away. You see that? So that's where you can use the sponge tool. The sponge can desaturate, can take the vibrance away, which might actually be a little helpful because that pink's a little strong, but it can also be used to bring the color back. So if I set it to saturate, it will bring that pink back a little bit if I've overburned it. <laughs> now that's lit pretty strong, so it should cast a shadow. So this is this is making some rational sense now. Okay, so it's made of three components, my head. This main structure, which gives me the angle and the spine and the anatomy to connect to the rest of my creature. This little main, I don't need to worry about erasing out that eye and stuff because that all gets covered up by my next component. I'm curious if I just get rid of this part, what it looks like. Oops, wrong layer. Yeah, I like it with that. Okay. So it doesn't mean I can't come back and and work on some of these transitions and these edges. Um, if I did that now, I'd do it with an eraser at a lower opacity, a little bit smaller using my stylus, and start kind of blending these textures and, and edges a little bit more. Getting into the shadows. But I love all these little details of these spikes and hairs blending fur with scales with a uh, feather that's that's what's fun about doing composites like this sometimes when i introduce this project i show taxidermy <laughs> because long before there was photoshop even before long before there were photographers that would composite kind of fantasy images together like bat boy on the star news um there were taxidermy artists that would take different animals and put them together onto one skeletal structure and that's basically what we're doing digitally here so the jackalope this is like my version of the jackalope right but it's important that all the anatomy matches first and foremost One last thing you can do, a little trick, is you can steal from your own reference, right? We did this a little bit with, with the landscape project. So if I want to repeat this little fringe of hair, that's the eyebrow basically, on the other side, I can duplicate it. <laughs> now he's got a toupee. And I can move it underneath. Yep. And I can warp it. I give him dreads. So the only danger of this is you don't want it to be too what I call copy pasty, where it's just so obvious that you're using the element over and over again. So make sure you you warp it and you customize it. But I want a little bit of that eyebrow, so now I can go in with my eraser. And clean it up. And actually kind of customize the shape a little bit. Now I'll erase it back. Let some of that original lizardy texture come through. And that's all it takes, right? Okay, so I've got I've got the head worked out for the most part. I don't need to worry about erasing out this background until I'm all done, because 
this part still, a lot of it's gonna get covered up. So it's a good time to save it. I've got my head assembly kind of complete. So now before I move on, I wanna make sure I know which components, and I have four layers involved in the head. So I'm going to select all four of those layers by holding down shift, and making them all selected in gray. And then I'm gonna click on the little folder icon. It's next to the new layer icon within the layer window. And it will put them all into a group folder. And I'm going to label that group folder the head, head and neck. So this is a way to help organize and work with your layers. But even better than that, it's a way of selecting all of them at once. So if I select the whole group, so if I auto select for group instead of layer, now it will move that whole thing together instead of each component. It will also transform that whole thing together, which is incredibly helpful as I start putting it together for, for my creature. Because it might be that I just have to tilt all of this a little bit to work with my sketch. Again, I'm working a little bit oversized, and that's okay. That's better than working too small. Okay, let's save it. I've got the head done. That head didn't take up all that much space, so I'm gonna go ahead and crop a little. I don't need all that factory floor anymore. By cropping, I'm saving on the efficiency of memory. Now I'm gonna go to the next element, and that's gonna be the chest. So I have a rough at the neck, and I've got the chest, and I've got a lot of different references here. I even have a hornet's nest I was thinking I might use for a little bit of the back. But as my basis, I, I'm thinking this works well. This kind of angle of chest. So. I want as much overlap as I can get. Then I can delete the smart object. After I've duplicated my selection. And I'm going to build the chest over here. I'm not going to immediately try to connect it. And I'm going to do it a little bit bigger than I need. So why am I using this chest? Well, I know there's a rib cage there, and the rib cage is at the angle I want. I also know there's a joint for a wing there, and that I know that that breastbone is enough width and has the muscles attached that can support wings. So this is a good chassis for my chest. Next, I can build up the textures and the interesting things. And this, speaking of taxidermy, this was a really weird one. <laughs> Strange hobbyist taxidermy, which took a porcupine with a possum, and I think a squirrel. Put it all together. And I just liked these textures, right? And because it's photographed on white, that makes it really easy to cut out and capture. So I'm just going to grab all this. I say it makes it really easy. It makes it easier. Delete the smart layer. Move this behind. Actually, now move it on top. Because I don't want just like a clean back here. I want something that looks kind of rougher and stranger, like the head. So if I move it on top, now how can I kind of blend that in? I'm thinking of the spine. I'm going to use warp. I'm going to bend it from the edge, up and out. It's going to be subtle. It's going to be strange. then I can start erasing it out, starting at 100%. And this is a good place for a soft edged eraser. I'm 
make it a little bit bigger and soft edge. And once you get rid of that hard edge, then you can start transitioning it. I like these colors better as well than just the straight hawk. Okay, now I can go to a lower opacity and start blending them a little bit. Now it always helps to work with the levels and the color balance before I get too far here. Both of these are very warm. So I'm going to start with the background, do a levels check, darken the midtones, and get a lot of that warmth out of the color balance. That's because a lot of these animal references, especially wild animal references, are going to be shot outside. The lighting is going to be very warm. So you might have to knock that back with color balance to something more neutral. And as long as we make all those decisions, then it's up to us as the creators, I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit too, to decide what the color temperature should be. So we're going for kind of a neutral lighting, very sharp focus. Think of it like a studio portrait of our, of our creature so that then we can place it in different environments and help it to match. Okay, I'm going to use the magic wand at the 32 tolerance with contiguous turned on. See what that leaves me with. Yeah. Took away probably a little too much, so let's take it down to a 12. Yep, and take it away in chunks. It's okay to have some noise. We're going to go over how to clean that up by the end. So all this little stuff, this is all noise. All leftovers. And I'm, I'm showing you some of the most difficult things to cut out. Quills. Feathers. They're like leaves on a tree. But with the right magic wand setting, you can... be pretty, pretty accurate, especially for these big gaps. Okay, now I want to just slightly soften. All these different components, these little checkerboards I'm cutting out. And I can always cut them out by hand in the areas where the wand fails me. All right. So what I'm going to do is use the magic wand, select the empty space that's now left, do refine edge or select and mask. It will remember my settings, which feathers and bites into it just a little bit, softens the selection. I'll zoom in so you can see what it does. So it'll take all those sharp edged pixels and now it will bite away at them. Oh, you know what? It's doing what I want it to do, but it, I had it still um, with contiguous turned on. And I want to select that empty space with contiguous turned off. Because one thing Photoshop's very good at is selecting empty space. Like you won't ever make a mistake selecting empty space. So I wanted to select the empty space everywhere. That will get all of these little undercuts as well. And then I noticed that I don't want it to mess with these, all these kind of delicate ones. I wanted to leave those. So I'm going to subtract that from this selection. Okay, then I can do select and mask. And it's all about finding a good selection strategy and erasing strategy for your reference, for the textures you want and then delete. 